All over the world, there are approximately 1.4 billion cars on the road. Every year, 15,000 lives are saved because of seat belts. But do you know where the first seat belt was used? Seat belts were first used by pilots and gliders. Lap belts were around from the 1930s, but apart from keeping people from flying out of cars, they did nothing to protect their heads or torsos. A breakthrough in the history of seat belts came in 1955 when two Americans named Roger W. Griswold and Hugh De Havin designed the first ever iteration for the three point seat belt. This was later improvised by Niels Bolin, a Swedish inventor working for Volvo that made the modern three point seat belt that we currently use. At that time, a relative of the CEO of Volvo had died in a car accident which prompted the company to promote car safety and make stronger and safer cars. Volvo could have made millions from this but they made it free for everyone in interest of safety. It is estimated that since its inception till the year of Niels Bolin's death in 2002, the three-point seat belt had saved over a million lives. Now let's go and find out more about the physics behind a seat belt. When our car accelerates, the car seat supplies the force required to accelerate us along with it. The heavier the passenger is and the faster the car moves, the stronger this force needs to be. When the car stops, the passenger keeps moving until an external force is applied in the opposite direction to stop them. Our legs can supply this force if the car slows down gradually, but if the car it's an obstacle the deceleration and force are too much for our legs or arms to handle. Seat belts stop us from tumbling around inside the car in case of a collision. Upon sensing a collision, the seat belts lock in place. When the car crashes, there is no unbalanced force acting on the person, so they continue moving forward. The person moves against the seat belt, exerting a force on it. In turn, the seat belt exerts a force back on the person. This causes a controlled deceleration of the passenger or driver. A crash, which stops the car and driver, must take away all its kinetic energy. A moderate amount of stretch in a seat belt harness can extend the stopping distance and reduce the average impact force on the driver compared to a non-stretching harness. Either a stretching or non-stretching seat belt reduces the impact force compared to no seat belt. With no seatbelt to stop the driver with the car, the driver flies free until stopped suddenly by the impact on the steering column or windshield. The stopping distance is estimated to be about one-fifth of that with a seatbelt, causing the average impact force to be about five times as great. The work done to stop the driver is equal to the average impact force on the driver times the distance travelled in stopping. A crash which stops the car causes the driver to take away all its kinetic energy and the work energy principle then dictates that a shorter stopping distance increases the impact force. With advancements being made every day, there have been major changes in the internal mechanisms of seatbelts too, which includes springs, balls, gears and torsion bars. Seatbelts are not only cost effective, but they provide high safety for a mechanism which is as basic as this and material which is just a stretchable or non-stretchable strip of fabric. There have been other additions for ensuring the safety of passengers like airbags which along with the seatbelt prepares for an accident even before it takes place. People think of seatbelts as a hindrance, but it is imperative for our safety. The absence of something as small as a seatbelt makes the entire vehicle incomplete and unsafe and in essence this is what real physics is about. Thank you.